So let's uh, go to kaggle.com and when you go to the competitions so you may see featured competitions as well as active competitions. So kaggle.com is a very good source to try your skills in machine learning or data mining or analytics. Let's look at uh, one example. So this talking data challenge. So this has a prize money of about $25,000. And uh, so far there are 2,781 people who are competing in this competition and it has about 23 days to go. So when you click on this challenge, it takes you to the website and provides you a lot of information. So there's a description that this is about uh, fraud risk detection. Talking data is uh, based on China's largest independent big data service platform which cover more than 70% of active mobile devices nationwide. And they handle 3 billion clicks per day and 90% are potentially fraudulent. So basically in this uh, challenge, one has to develop a prediction model to make a prediction whether somebody who clicks on ad, whether they are going to download the app or not. Also how evaluation will be done. And then what are the prizes for first, second and third positions? And what is the timeline? And you also have data. So for example, how your submission file should be organized uh, is indicated in sample underscore submissions. And this is a 40.11 megabyte file. So note that uh, this train.csv.zip file is quite huge and uh, in zipped format it is 1.21 when you unzip it is about 7.5 gigabytes and it has uh, more than 184 million rows and that's why they have created a sample by taking 100,000 data points out of more than 184 million and this test.csv has more than 18 uh, million rows so one major problem that we are dealing with is that the data size is very very big and then you also have description about these files as well as data fields so for example first column in the data is IP which is IP address of a click so this is app ID for marketing and then device type so whether it is iPhone 6 plus or iPhone 7 and so on our target variable is is attributed when this value is zero, it means that the app was not downloaded. And when this value is one, that means app was downloaded. In this example, I'm going to use this sample, which is a much smaller file and that will run very fast. And we are going to use train underscore sample file. So that smaller file which has 100,000 rows. We have read these 100,000 rows and there are eight uh, variables or columns. So first five variables uh, are read as integers because they are in the form of numbers. Click time and attributed time. So they have been read as factors. And because they are time related, obviously they need to be handled differently. So in this example, I'm going to ignore uh, these two variables and we'll convert uh, last variable into factor. So it gives us that out of 100,000, one appears only 227 times and everything else is zero. In fact, if you take percentage, more than 99.7% of the target variable values are zero. So basically a user is not downloading the app and they are downloading app only 0.227% of the time. So the problem is of high class imbalance. So we have split data into 
training and testing data set. So out of 100,000, we have more than 80,000 in training and about 20,000 data points in testing. So because uh, this number is uh, very high compared to how many ones we have, we'll do under sampling of zeros to match these ones. And that we can do using rows package. If you want to know more details about how to address a class imbalance problem, so you can make use of handling class imbalance problem in R. So I will name this as under because I am doing under sampling of class 0. And our target variable is, is attributed. So the data is trained. Method is under sampling. For total sample size n, we need to figure out uh, a number that will balance the two classes. And uh, let's look at what is this number in training data set. So we have 188 ones in the training data. So 188 times 2 is 376. So let's use 376 to balance the data and then dollar sign in data. So now if you run this, you can see that both zeros appear 188 times and one appear 188 times. Our uh, training data will not be highly biased towards zero, but it will also give importance to one. So for prediction model, I'm going to use random forest. So we can see we have eight variables and let's get rid of click time and attributed time. To keep this analysis simple, I'm just uh, removing these two variables. So we want all the rows and we want columns from 1 to 5 and also 8. And then we can have our model. So it runs very quickly because this uh, data that we are using is uh, very small. It has only 376 observations. Where we can predict using our model that we have created just now and test data versus test dollar sign is attributed and we can say we are more interested in positive equals one so we should put this in quotes we had 39 ones and this model is able to capture 35 correctly in the test data overall accuracy is 94 percent but in this case a more important uh, value to look at is sensitivity so how often this model is able to correctly predict one that percentage is 89.7 percent so we are able to get uh, high sensitivity value because we address the class imbalance problem to some extent so obviously there's a lot of scope to improve this uh, model and especially we are only dealing with 376 observations Remember. so although there is a huge scope to improve our model and especially because we are taking a very very small sample 376 out of more than 184 million so our sensitivity and accuracy may not be the best but let's go through the steps to see how we can submit this result let me read test file for this competition so this is called test.csv so note that uh, the test data that we created, so that is different and this is a new CSV file. We can open this because this file is big. So depending on the RAM of your computer, the process may take some time. So let's look at the structure of uh, this test file. So note that uh, it has a click ID column, which is just 0, 1, 2, 3, etc 
it has click time but it does not have the seventh variable in our original data file and it also doesn't have the target variable so let's create new one which has all the rows from new and we are going to remove the first column because our model is not going to recognize that column since it was not there in the original file so i'm also going to use this new one dollar sign and attributed time that was the seventh variable and I'll just store a value of zero there and let's store predictions in P our model is model and we want to apply this to data new one so again these uh, predictions will take some time and it is going to take a lot of time simply because this new one has more than 187 million rows you can see the predictions uh, they take about 1.1 1 .1 .1 gigabyte space so let me create a data frame so let's simply call it D so our CSV file should have two columns new and then dollar sign and there's a click ID so that becomes our first column is underscore attributed becomes our second column that includes all these predictions P and then we can write csv file write dot csv so we are going to write d and i'm going to store this in desktop and let's call this kaggle dot csv if we uh, write this csv file with just whatever you see here it will create a extra column with just 0 1 2 3 4 and name that variable as x so to avoid that because we don't need third column i'm going to say row dot names is false so run so now let's go to the kaggle website and click on submit predictions so they allow you to have more than one submission every day and i still have two submissions uh, remaining so let's uh, upload the file so this file is on my desktop and it's called kaggle.csv so this is more than 200 uh, megabyte file so once uh, this is done 100 percent we can make a submission So once it is done it automatically scores score for my submission is uh, 0.87 in fact the earlier submission that i made was 0.8996 so since this is not an improvement so my ranking doesn't change it remains at uh, 2292 so it's quite low and i have made uh, five submissions including this one to actually improve this uh, obviously one has to look at uh, other strategies and uh, the data that we used uh, was very very small percentage of the total data set which included uh, more than 184 million rows of data and we just used few hundred so obviously our accuracy is not likely to be very high so one strategy would be to get more samples from the training data and other strategies uh, could involve looking at uh, other methods other than random forest so one method that is very popular with uh, such uh, competitions and challenges is extreme gradient boosting so i have still not tried this on this data so that could be one strategy that may help to improve the score and also this uh, algorithm runs very fast so you also save on time and another one that you can try is uh, deep learning with Keras in R. We can make use of uh, multi-layer perceptron neural network. And also this is based on Google's TensorFlow. And uh, these uh, neural networks uh, run very fast. So this could be another way to explore improvements in accuracy and sensitivity especially of uh, our models. Leaders right now, for example, they have a score of 0.98 to two and uh, they have made already 77 entries to reach there 
so difference between first and second one is actually a difference uh, at the fourth decimal so you can see this is very competitive and uh, those who are at the top obviously they have spent a lot of time they have made like more than 80 entries to reach their 